The next book we're going to read is entitled Fossils Tell of Long Ago. Once upon a time, a huge fish was swimming around when along came a sm smaller fish. The big fish was so hungry it swallowed the other fish whole. The big fish died and sank to the bottom of the sea. As you can see, there's the really big fish. And over here in the corner is the small fish. This happened 90 million years ago. How do we know? We know because the fish turned to stone. The fish became a fossil. A plant or animal that has turned to stone is called a fossil. Scientists can tell how old stones are. They could tell how old the fo this fish fossil was. So if you look at this fish fossil, you can see the big fish that's turned into stone. But if you see on the inside, it's actually the smaller fish that it swallowed, which also turned to stone. So this is a fossil, but there's actually two fossils. You got the fossil, the bigger fish, and the smaller fish. How did the fish become a fossil? Most animals and plants do not become fossils when they die. Some rot. Others dry up, crumble, and blow away. No trace of them is left. This could have happened to the big fish. We, This could have happened to the big fish. We would never know how it had lived. Instead, the fish became a fossil. This is how it happened. Picture this page. When the big fish died, it sank into the mud at the bottom of the sea. Slowly, the soft parts of the fish rotted away. Only its hard bones were left. The bones of the fish it had eaten were left, too. The skeleton of the, of the fish lay buried and protected deep in the mud. Thousands of years went by. More layers of mud covered the fish. Tons and tons of mild mud piled up. After a long time, the surface of the earth changed. The sea where the fish was buried dried out. So here we can see first the big fish that ate the little fish dies, falls down to the mud. The second picture is it starts to, to rot, the, the soft parts of that fish rot away, and it is covered with mud. And then through time, it turns into a fossil, and eventually that water that was there could turn into a dry area where there's no ocean, and then eventually scientists will dig up the fossil. The weight of the layers of mud pressed down slowly. The mud turned to rock. rock. As that happened, groundwater seeped through the changing layers of mud. Minerals were dissolved in the water. The water seeped into all the tiny holes in the fish bones. The minerals in the water were left behind in the fish bones. After a very long time, the bones turned to stone. The fish was a fossil. And there's a picture of the fossil of the fish. Some fossils, like the fish, are actual parts of plants or animals that have turned to stone. Sometimes a fossil is only an imprint of a plant or an animal. Millions of years ago, a leaf fell onto a fern-like plant. It dropped into the swampy forest soil, which is called peat. The leaf rotted away, but it left the mark of its shape in the peat. The peat, with the imprint of the leaf, hardened. It became a rock called coal. Coal is a fossil, too. There are dinosaur tracks. They were made in fresh mud 115 million years ago. Sand filled the dinosaur's footprints in the mud. The sand hardened into a rock called sandstone. Millions of, later, millions of years later, fossil hunters dug through the rock. They found the fossil tracks, exact imprints of the dinosaur's foot. As you can see, the dinosaur tracks that were left in the mud, eventually they fill with sand and they harden and then they turn into a rock called sandstone which leaves the impression of the dinosaur's foot. Not all fossils are found in stone. Some are found in the frozen ground of the Arctic. This ancient mammoth was a kind of elephant. It froze to death thousands of years ago. The grass it had been eating was still in its mouth. That's what a mammoth looks like. 
sort of looks like an elephant, but it's got a lot more hair, and you can see it has tusks too, just like elephants now. And in the Arctic area, it's real cold, and there's ice and snow that builds up and builds up. And then um, this woolly mammoth was actually frozen to death and then trapped in the ice. Millions of years ago, a fly was caught in the sticky sap of a tree. The sap hardened and became a fossil called amber. Amber looks like yellow glass. The, the fly was perfectly preserved in the amber. Other insects have pres been preserved in amber too. We have learned many things from the fish, the fern, the fly, and the dinosaur tracks. Fossils tell us about the past. And here's a picture of the fly that got stuck in the sap, and then the sap eventually turned into amber, and inside the amber is a pres perfectly preserved example of the fly. Fossils tell us there were there, were, there once were forests where now there are deserts. Fossils tell us there once were seas where now there are mountains. Many lands that are cold today were once warm. We find fossils of tropical plants in very cold places. Fossils tell us about strange creatures that lived on Earth long ago. No such creatures are alive today. They have all died out. We say they are extinct. So when an animal completely dies out, the term we use for that is extinct. Some fossils are found by accident. You too might find a fossil if you look hard. When you see a stone, look at it carefully. It may be a fossil of something that once lived. You can see a picture of people digging up fossils right there. And it's just showing people like us, if we pick up stones, we could eventually possibly even find a fossil. How would you like to make a fossil? Not a million year old fossil, a one minute old fossil. Make a clay imprint of your hand. The imprint shows what your hand is like, the way a dinosaur's track shows us what, it, what its foot was like. So if we took some clay, some wet clay, and we pressed our hand down into it, we'd leave an impression, and that's similar to a fossil. Suppose when it dried out, you buried your clay imprint. Suppose a million years from now, someone found it, your imprint would be as hard as stone. It would be a fossil of your hand. I would tell, I would tell the finder, it would tell the finder something about you. It would tell something about life on earth a million years earlier. So you could take that piece of clay where you pressed your hand down and you buried it and a million years from now, someone could find it and they would uh, know what your hand would look like. Every time someone finds a fossil, we learn it a lot more about life on Earth long ago. Someday you may find a fossil, one that is millions and millions of years old. You may discover something no one knows today. There's the last picture. And that is the end of the book.